So thank you very much for, for, for coming, Dr. Okay. Wachter. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do in your day job? Sure. Uh, I'm a physician, but I'm a general internist who just takes care of patients in hospitals. That's my clinical work. My research is uh, in the areas of quality of care, patient safety, uh, the organization of care. But for the last couple of years, I've been thinking a lot and writing a lot about information technology as it's entered the world of healthcare. And uh, to me, it's extraordinarily important and infinitely interesting. In American medicine, computers came in in a major way about five years ago, and they made some things better and they made some things worse. Uh, and, and it was quite surprising, uh, the, the impact of technology on healthcare, in ways that we just hadn't fully anticipated. When you're looking at through this lens, what what struck you as the, the differences and the similarities at a high level? Well, my impressions about technology and, and the NHS began in 2011, interestingly. Uh, so I walked into St. Mary's Hospital and I had heard about NPFIT. I didn't know much about it, but I knew that the country had invested 10 or 15 billion pounds in digitizing the National Health Service. So I walked into Imperial and I said, I'd love to see your computer system because we're just kind of getting started in this in the US. And they, uh, the answer was something between we don't really have one or you can look at there's a computer over there and it looked like you know, a Tandy from 1980. It was not a, an advanced computer system. And I, I kind of was scratching my head. I said, how did this happen? They said, basically, this huge national program to wire the National Health Service pretty much failed. I knew a little bit about the history of NPFIT. And so my guess was that the decision would be to not do that again. But then I began looking at the GP sector, and the GP sector has been a tremendous uh, success story, really, uh, of, of international dimensions. And so it, it felt important to take a look at the history of NPFIT, the history of GP digitization, the history of the United States effort to digitize its system. And I think my impressions were, uh, let's be sure we don't commit the same errors as NPFIT but there are a whole bunch of other errors out there to be committed if you're not careful. Even in the US, where I think we thought about this in a different way, we didn't completely get it right. And, and a lot of that was not truly understanding the adaptive change nature of technology. It's not just about the technology, it's about the people, it's about the work, it's about the culture. Would it be fair to say that in the US, um, clinical leadership have taken more of a deeper interest in the, in the administrative Know, an informatic side of things than in the, in the, in the UK. That's, that's very much true. We have 15 physicians who have funded and important roles in informatics at UCSF, meaning everything from what we would, your equivalent of the CCIO in our place, it's called the Chief Health, Chief Health Information Officer. He's a physician who spends 80% of his time on technology adoption and innovation and improvement. There are 14 others who spend 50%, 30%, 20% of their time. It's about six full-time equivalents of physician informaticists. But in a similar size UK trust, at least of the ones I visited, I would go to a trust and there would be a CCIO uh, who probably had no professional training in informatics. He had two sessions a week allocated to this job. And he had three assistants that had one session a week. And this is to digitize a one or two billion pound a year organization with you know two, three, four thousand employees. It, 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 it's, it's impossible. And so even adjusting for the differences in spend between the US and the UK, I just don't see how you implement technology effectively over time if that's if those are the boots on the ground that you have. And I think it flows from an insufficiently or an, an immature understanding of what technology implementation and adoption looks like. The buying of the system and the airlifting in of the software is the beginning of the job, it's not the end. Healthcare is arguably the most important endeavor that humans are involved in, and it's all about information. So this should be an extraordinarily exciting time where we're basically taking this incredibly important work and moving it appropriately to a digital to a digital backbone. What would you like to tell the medical director who's faced with another technology transformation? How do they approach that in a way that is gonna lead to successful outcomes as they define it? It's not like any other field sort of snapped their fingers and all of a sudden technology was perfect. There was 
bumps along the way, we forget about those things. It takes a little while to get this right. You know, we're starting on a path uh, that ultimately will lead to care that is better, safer, less expensive. I think until, until you're in the digital world, it's almost impossible to understand the implications of being in a digital world. I think that, that, that you know, once technology is deeply embedded in the system, there will be shifts in the way that we do our work, the way we communicate with one another, the way we communicate with patients, the way patients communicate with each other. Um, and as smart as we might be, we'll never be able to fully anticipate those things. Because at the end of the day, there are probably jobs that people are doing today that will not exist. I will be personally surprised if 25 years from now, a human being is looking at an x-ray and saying that bunch of, of digital dots looks like lung cancer. I mean, that seems to me that's, that's an easier problem than a driverless car. I think there will be lots of changes. I think ultimately the bottom line is that health systems everywhere have to figure out how do we organize ourselves in a way that delivers the highest quality, safest, most satisfying care at the lowest cost. I think there's tremendous opportunity and I think part of what BCS can do is leverage that uh, in ways that I, I'm, there's not really a parallel entity that I can think of in the U.S. that sort of thinks cross-sectorally about technology. So I think it's a, a, an enormous advantage. My impression talking to you is, is there's, there's hope that coming from somewhere you're, look, you're seeing plenty of opportunity to do things better and, and differently, but lots of reasons to think that we can be successful. I believe that very much. Well, that's very exciting. Well, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure. Thanks. Thank you.